Jesse and I are in New York City for the Sony A9 Mark III launch event. And this is a really amazing camera. It's a 24 megapixel sports camera with a couple of features we've never seen before. First, it has a true global shutter, which means an instant readout speed. For example, the Z9 from Nikon has an amazingly fast readout speed of like 1 250th of a second with the electronic shutter. That makes it as fast as a typical mechanical shutter, but you could still get banding under LED lights in a sporting event, for example. This has zero millisecond readout speed, like it reads out the entire sensor in an instant. And that means you can shoot at shutter speeds up to 1 80 thousandths of a second or 1 16 thousandths of a second continuously, and you'll never get any banding and you never have to use a mechanical shutter. It's only a 24 megapixel sensor, which probably made it a lot easier to do it continuously. So it might not be the ideal wildlife camera, but for sports shooters, it is absolutely phenomenal. The frames per second is 120, 120 frames per second. And you might be saying, that's too many. They actually gave you a burst button on the front. So you have a regular shutter button, but you can push the burst button so that you can shoot at a slower speed, like 20 frames per second, when you don't need the full 120 frames per second. I think just the ability to turn 120 frames per second on and off with a second button makes it so much more useful. That was one of our big complaints shooting high frames per second on competing cameras like the Z9 or the Canon R3. The buffer on it is, I think, 152 frames. So you can't shoot for too long with RAW files, but we've been shooting with it here using JPEG files, and it seems to be really good. Now, it does buffer. Like you're shooting at 120 frames per second, 24 megapixels, that's a lot of data. So you do see it get backed up. Sony is still using the slower CF Express Type A cards. So they're, they're about half the speed of similar CF Express Type B cards. So that could be a bottleneck, but we didn't experience it being too much of a problem unless you were shooting 120 frames per second for like four or five seconds. Then I started to see the buffering become a little bit of an issue and it would slow down some. I don't think anybody's gonna be shooting those frame rates for long because just processing it would become a real problem. Another big feature, they are offering pre-shot buffering. So just like Canon and Nikon and Panasonic and Olympus have, when you push the shutter, it can go back through the buffer and record stuff from a second before. So that's good if you're watching a bird and you wanna capture it, catching that fish and pulling it out of the water. You don't have to press the shutter every time it hits the water because 90% of the time it's gonna come up with nothing. You could wait until you see that the bird got the fish, then push the shutter and the camera goes back in time up to a full second and saves those up to 120 frames per second. It's, so, um, it's such an amazing technology, I'm really blown away by it. This is just a preview. This afternoon, we're gonna be spending a lot of time with it. I have the Z9. Canon R3 and the Alpha 1 in my bag, and I'm going to be pulling them all out and holding them up. So subscribe to see our more detailed review. This camera is going to be, brace yourself, $6,000. So it's $1,000 more than the Canon R3 and $1,500 more than the Z8. Uh, and it's not going to be available until the spring, they're saying. So this is very early pre-release. Bye.